Dr. Doreen Grand is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. Shem, Shem, Shemu says, um, hi, I would like to know if a child with ASD has meltdowns for a long time and he uh, is nonverbal, what can be done to calm him down? Great question. Very good question. So um, I'm trying to think of how to answer this without going into an hour long <laughs> lecture. So. <laughs> Um, so, you know, meltdowns are really, we often talk about how, how any kind of challenging behavior for someone who is nonverbal should be classified as communication. You should think of it as a, what is the child trying to communicate at that time. And that's really important because uh, there's a reason that the child is having a meltdown. And usually from a behavioral standpoint, we always say that everything we do is for two reasons. One is uh, to gain access to something or to avoid something. And so if, I'll give you some examples. Like I might have a meltdown uh, if you take away an object like a toy or something that I want to gain access to, right? So that would be uh, one reason, or I might, for instance, have a meltdown if I want to get out of an environment that I'm like in classroom or something, and I want to just get out. So I'll have a tantrum and they'll take me out. Or I might have a meltdown because I want to gain uh, your attention. Um, or um, so it's always gain access to something or avoid something. And so in behavior, uh, uh, behavioral therapy, what we do is we do what's called a functional behavior assessment. And that means we figure out what the meltdown is trying to communicate. If the child could talk, what would they say? What would they be saying instead of that meltdown? Would they be saying, no, I don't want to do this. Uh, no, I, I, this is too hard. I want to break or I won't, don't take my toy away or, hey, you're not paying attention or whatever they're trying to communicate. I don't like the pain that I'm feeling right now, whatever it is, right? And you have to try to figure that out. And a behavior analyst, a BCBA can help you with that. Um, because the, when, once you figure that out, it, you, there is the treatment. The treatment has to do with the actual function of the behavior. So for example, if the meltdown occurs because the child wants to leave a certain environment, then you don't allow the child to leave the environment, but you teach them a different way of communicating what they want. If the meltdown occurs because the child doesn't want to do something, you don't allow them to avoid doing that thing, and you teach them a different way that allows them to avoid it. I feel like I should have a better way of explaining this. So um, what you're trying to do is you're trying to teach the child that a meltdown is not a good way of communicating. There are better, more adaptive ways of communicating. So when you have a meltdown, you don't get what you want. But when you ask or point to an icon or give me a picture or whatever more appropriate adaptive way of communication... When you do that, you can get what you're trying to get. And at, the more you do that, the more over time the child realizes, you know, these tantrums are not working anymore. I'm not getting what I want. So this is better because I'm now, I will now use my words or I will now use my PEC system or whatever it is. I will keyboard so that because that's what actually works. Hopefully that made some sense. Absolutely. I mean, this is a difficult concept, right? Uh, can I also say, because I think it was you that said one day, uh, you know, many years ago, and it just went in my head, um, because I think words matter. It's the reason why we do jargon of the day on the show. Um, and, and I had always heard tantrums and I heard meltdowns. And when people describe one versus the other, um, you know, I, like I would say that my child was having a meltdown and my friend would say that their child was having a meltdown. It had, they were nothing alike. Um, and the same thing with tantrum. And I think it was you who said, 
um, and it really resonated with me that tantrums are when if we gave you the thing you wanted, the tantrum would stop. Meltdown is when if we still gave it to you, you, it wouldn't stop because there's almost always a sensory component to when it's the full meltdown. Yeah. And so I just wanted to touch on that because I think yeah. that yeah. made my head go, oh my gosh, it isn't, it, there, it, it's so important that we learn that there's something that the child wants because it starts with that. Yeah. But I know me, I'm allergic to wheat. And yeah. if I have some kind of an infraction and I, I'm like anybody else, I have things that I want, things that I need and things that tick me off and things that I can go off on, right? Um, or just sour my mood. Um, but if I have wheat and something happens, I am inconsolable. I don't have yes. control over myself. I'm breaking out in hives. I'm hot. And yes. my husband will tell you, you can't even be in the room with me. I'm a mess. Yep. And, I, and I always think about that and think for our kiddos, like there are things that are going to wreck their day because they're people. But if they're having an allergic reaction and something is wrecking their day and they aren't getting what they want, it, it like quickly degrades into, and that's just one example. You're that's allergic right. to something. It that's could right. be a flickering light. It could be, could the be a million things. Million, right. things. million things. That's ex I'm so glad you brought that up because I think it all has to do with how they feel, right? And this goes back to, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the bigger issue of trying to make it fair, right? It's always about how, you know, there, and that's Shannon, those examples you gave are perfect because we don't know if the light flickering is bothering the child. We don't know if they're hearing outside noises that are bothering them. I mean, I can tell you, like, for example, right now that I'm a little sick, uh, you know, when I, if I lay down and I hear, let's say, I don't know, the washing machine next door or something, that's going to bother me more than when I'm not sick. And a lot of stuff is going on with our kids that we are not really fully cognizant of or that we don't know how they feel on an ongoing basis, right? And so they can be more irritable due to the sensory issues around them. They can be more irritable due to not sleeping. That's another one. They can be more irritable due to stomach problems or other types of pain that we're not aware of. There's a lot of that sort or, or diet, you know, uh, um, having eaten things that cause them anxiety or stress or allergies or a million different things can be happening. And so you still, you know, behavioral intervention to me is just one of several things that have to be done. And I've always said this, it isn't enough. Like you might try to figure out the function of something and alter, you know, the communication with the child and teach the child that this form of communication doesn't work. This one does. And you should always do that, but it might not be enough. And you might need to also look at, did he sleep last night? Maybe he's not sleeping and I should just like let things be for a day or two. Uh, is he, what's happening with his diet? Was there an infringement on the diet? Did something occur there? Is he being bullied at school? I mean, there's like so many things that you need to also figure out, right? Because it's hard sometimes for our kids to communicate those things. Absolutely. But I love that you always come from the place of saying it has to be fair. Yeah. That we, you know, I didn't feel that it was fair this morning to ask Dr. Grant, Grant Pichet to be on the show. I Like, you know, she's got, she's not feeling well. And I didn't feel like it was fair. She's decided it was fair and she's an adult. I'm listening to her, but with our kiddos, they don't often get to go, Hey, you know, I'd like to take a pass here today. Can I, could you go easy on me today? Or I'm having a hard time. They don't have the ability to communicate that to us. So, so we have to be extra mindful of that. Um, I totally agree. Totally agree. Well, you're the one well, think, who taught me that. I mean, Shannon, this is like, I was just reading like kind of what Tracy is writing here, which there's always a bigger picture. And I agree with that so much. And I think the difference, you know, you and I always talk about good and bad ABA. Yeah. And this makes a really, this is where you can differentiate good and bad ABA because Sometimes in the world of ABA, and I'll be the, you know, as a behavior analyst, I could say this. Uh, sometimes the, the behavior analyst gets so, uh, you know, entrenched 
in behavioral techniques, that they don't pull back and look at the individual as a human being with sensory and needs and with sleep and dietary needs and with, you know, all sorts of stuff. That's why every time I do a training for behavior analysts, I start, I, I emphasize that. There's nothing more I can emphasize than it, you are not just dealing with a behavior. You're dealing with a human being who ha also needs to sleep and eat and feel good and feel healthy and all of that and, and exhibit behaviors. And that's a very important thing to, to recognize. Absolutely. Amen to that. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. See you next time. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you too. Bye-bye for now. To subscribe, click here. And if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.